Hey guys, by the way, it is that time of the year, our gardening segment, making a return. So you know how you spring clean the inside of your house? No doubt that does translate outdoors when it's time to clear up the garden beds and maybe the lawn. Perhaps you're making room for new items or even rearranging what's already there. Here's Peter Mezzett from Western Nurseries with tips for planting and transplanting. So this week, Peter, we're going to talk about transplanting and now it's kind of the time you got to tackle that if you want to move something in your yard, right? Yes, yes. Plants don't like to have their roots chopped off after they push out leaves or the needles start to grow in the case of evergreens. So April in Massachusetts is the perfect time to get out in the yard. Now, people have plants that have crowded into the one next to it or they realize they put the plant in the wrong spot and it's 30 feet tall Guilty. in front of the house. <laughs> so that's why people would transfer. But April's the time to do it. Once those leaves push out or the new growth on um, evergreens, you're, you're putting the plant at risk if you're chopping off its roots. Okay, and on the flip side, there might be a new additions to our house as well, right? Right, right. so what I wanted to talk about also today uh, is how to pl uh, properly plant a uh, container-grown shrub. This is a fruit tree, actually, and um, when you pull it out of the pot, typically you will see a lot of Whoa. roots. Ugh, that thing's heavy. And you cannot be too rough on these things. Now, the roots tend to circle around like that, and you want to get them facing out horizontally into the soil profile of the hole. Otherwise, the water tends to shoot right by, and the roots tend to stay in this soilless media okay. that, that it was grown in. And so to, is that going to stunt the growth of the tree, or it's going to kill the tree if it gets stuck like that? Well, it, won't, it, it can girdle, like some of these major roots here. You really want to get those out to oh, the side. Geez. So that doesn't hurt. These are the feeder roots right here. These are actually taking up the nutrients in the water and the soil. But it's better to have a tool than your hand, of course. But you can really, you can lean it over and you can really chop it up. You can take off this big bat bottom mat. But the goal is to, to conserve as much, uh, this is good soil, right? It's good soil. You can put this in the hole. Okay. Along with some other things I'll talk about in a second. So save that soil. But generally you want to roll it around a little bit. Be careful not to hurt the top branches and just really rough it up so that all these little feeder roots are kind of f facing Ouch. out to the side and they'll want to go into the soil surrounding okay. the shape of the pot. All right, so get aggressive with that thing, right? Very aggressive, yep. Okay, now talk to me about how, how we're concocting this to be a healthy mixture, a healthy well, foundation for the plant. In New England, many homes, especially the ones built in the last 40 or 50 years, the contractor didn't do you any favors and leave you much soil. Mm. This, I have pretty good soil here. It's about a foot deep of pretty good soil, but even with that, I like to use compost, mixing that in with the and you said soil. this is an essential part for everybody that's tackling the garden right now. Like you've got to have it's compost. insurance. It adds nutrients and organic matter to your soil. So any fertilizers you add are broken down properly by microorganisms. It's just compost. You can never go wrong. And usually you can use about 25, 30 percent compost okay. mixed in. And then we always recommend a root starter. This is Biotone Plus. It's got some nitrogen, a little bit of phosphorus, and potassium. And you want to use about in a 10 gallon, 15 gallon pot size, you want to use three or four cups of this. Okay. And you just kind of scatter it around like that, and then you mix it up. Mix it up a little bit, so it looks like that. And then the plant goes in, and uh, this goes around the plant. I like to water in, okay. so you make sure that the water gets into that root mass as so you're planting it. Okay. So it's very important to make sure that you water in very heavily when you first plant so that you know the water is getting right into the trunk within the soilless media it was grown in and in the surrounding soils you're, you're applying. And that way in the future, and you water it in again afterwards with a saucer around, and in the future you know that the water is going to go straight down into something that's already wet. Do you want to pack it down by the way? You don't want to pack it too heavily, but when you fill up along, you know, in the hole alongside that root ball, I'd water it in halfway through then water it in at the, get, okay. at the end again. Okay. All right, all things to keep these happy new plants uh, nice and healthy in your yard. Peter, I would uh, shake your hand, but let's do a little fist pump this all time right. around. It's a little messy. <laughs> and you're going to go see this guy for the best of the plants that you can find for your yard. And I was there, and that was some serious inspiration, even some little buds on the plants at Western Nursery. So uh, happy planting, everybody. Melissa?